Welcome back. In this next section of our training series, we're going to take a look at patterns. Um, this is the way patterns work. Uh, it, it's, it's really a method to allow you to line up objects very quickly and efficiently. So let's say, for example, you wanted to build almost like a Lego piece, I think is the best example in this, in this first one, which is the pattern is called a rectangular pattern. And what it does is it allows you to put an object on the grid and then multiply that object out in different directions to create a pattern. So I'm going to start with a, a flat box. Uh, we're going to make it 120 by 120 by 10. And this will, this will serve as our base or our platform. And then I'm going to pick a sphere. Just place it right here for now. And then I'm going to move the sphere into the pattern like that. Okay, and so my goal is I want a bunch of a bunch of half domes this way and that way. And so we're going to see we're going to use the pattern tool to make that happen. So I'm going to click on the first one, which is a rectangular pattern. It's going to prompt me for what is the solid that you want to replicate, and then what directions do you want it to replicate. So the solid is going to be that sphere. The directions are going to be this way and this way. Okay, so now you can see the two arrows in in the sphere itself it's, are prompting me to say, okay, pull out to these different directions. And for right now, I have a set of three. I'm going to say let's do four, and I'm going to pull them out this way. And you can see as I start pulling out, I get four spheres along this axis and four along this axis as well. And just like that, oh, I think I only picked three on that one, didn't I? So let's see if I can go in and pick four. I can. I'm going to go in and pick four, so now I'm, I've got a grid of 16. And if I view this from the top, that'll give me a much better view of how well it's aligned, so I can make small adjustments if I need to. Now maybe I'll make it like that, and I'll bring the, the square in at some point. But uh, once I'm confirmed, I just click away, and there is my shape with my pattern on top of half domes. The next pattern is circular. And the way this one works, I, I, I thought the an application for this might be in the scenario where, let's say, you were building some sort of clock uh, or other object that required multiple pieces around a circle of the same degrees. So for example, I'll just kind of show it to you here. If I go to Patterns and I go to Circular Pattern, again, I'm prompted for Solid and Axis. I'm going to click This is my Solid, and then This is going to be my Axis. And it's going to ask me, how many do you want? By default, it put out three. So I'm going to say 12. I can just type it in there, actually. 12. Uh, looks good to me. I click away, and now I have this what looks almost like a clock. So if I were building a clock, maybe I wouldn't use circles, I might use rectangles. But I'd have, uh, I'd have this, this pattern ready to go. The next pattern is called a path pattern. And the way the path pattern works is you have an object and a path that you've created, whether it's a spline or some sort of polyline, and you're going to have the object repeat itself along that path. So I'm going to select path pattern. Again, pick a solid, and then pick the path. And this time, when I'm presented with the prompt of what to do next, I just pull the arrow along the path. And so I'm going to pull it across all the way to the end. And you'll notice that, again, by default, three objects came out. But there's no uh, readily visible prompt for how many objects fit on this path. So if you take a look at this little double arrow in the middle of the path, I can take that. And as I drag it backwards, I'm increasing, you see the plus sign, I'm increasing the number of objects along that path. And now you'll also notice that in my dialog box here, I do have a quantity that I can type. So I'm just going to grab eight, I think. Nice. Click away. And now I've got a set of eight spheres along this path. In this last segment of pattern, we're going to take a look at mirror. And the way mirror works is you have a series of objects and you want to replicate them in another area in reverse. So in our sample here, we have four uh, different size spheres and a 
rectangle that we're going to mirror off of. In other words, we're going to bring another set of four on this side. And so what we do is we go up to mirror. It's going to ask for the solid. In this case, because I've got four different solids, I'm actually holding my shift key down to select multiple solids. Okay, shift key. And then I'm going to pick my mirror plane, which is going to be this one right here. And just like that, we've got the mirror image of those objects on the other side.